Hello again, Manga Matt here with the February manga update. Uh, you know, I I made a bit of a bit more than I could promise with uh, trying to get manga reviews out faster. Uh, you forget that February is one week less than all the other months, except when you find out. Oh, I I had a uh, less time than I thought. But regardless, uh, let's move on here. Uh, first up, I saw this at a at a Barnes and Noble, and I was intrigued enough to read the first volume, and then I decided to get all of it. And then I find out later that it was only going to be three volumes long. But it's still good for what it is so far, uh, and that is Prophecy volumes uh, one and two. Uh, this series follows a special unit of the police department in Japan that deals specifically in criminals who who work around cyber crimes. Any any cyber crime related uh, problems they deal with it. And it, like the first the first store first little story it shows them tracking down some hacker kid who's been uh, uploading and distributing uh, hundreds of thousands of a uh, pirated uh, Game Boy and DS cartridge games and and you know they busted him and, and but the main focus becomes around this this sort of vigilante called the paper boy because of course he wears a paper bag a sort of makeshift paper newspaper mask on his face and the reason behind it being that he always uses that day's newspaper so that when he posts online you know that it was it wasn't a pre-recorded message he's doing it in in uh, real time and what he's been doing is anytime somebody uh, does any kind of cyberbullying online they they if they ever openly mock somebody online or anything he hunts them down and serves out his own brand of justice all while on the while online he'll take them to some location and he'll videotape what he's doing or if or he'll burn down a building and he'll say I'm burning down this building and then he does it uh, and so it becomes a a quite a work by the cyber crimes division over figuring out is it one guy is it multiple guys why is he doing it is he? How, what are his methods that he's using to hack into some of these places and find? Because he's because when he uploads, he he uses a sort of he's managed to crack this sort of randomizer chip that a lot of these internet cafes use. So it he's basically figured out a way of logging himself onto these public servers without without uh, giving away any information or without. Uh, getting caught on security cameras when he's going into these places. So it, if you like a lot of crime drama, and especially if you like it more in the real world perspective, because at one point the the paper boy's actions actually create a sort of backlash in the politics, at, where they start wanting to try and pass bills to regulate people on the internet, saying like. Uh, Minors aren't allowed. My, say for saying uh, minors wouldn't be allowed on uh, internet forums. Uh, if you were to post on internet forums, you would need to acquire some kind of a license. And then when you post all of your official uh, entries, like your na your actual name and birth and everything, would be posted along with it. It would essentially eliminate the anonymity of online posting. All for this. All because of the radical actions of new of this uh, terrorist uh, doing it, which that could that could in you could in a sense see that as actually happening, uh, which I guess bears in mind the title of the series being called Prophecy. It, this if uh, more cyber terrorism and cyber crimes start becoming a real thing, there could in there could become more strict regulations on how and when and the methods of people posting and then ways in which to track them down through it uh, it would it, it's an interesting kind of speculative fiction sci-fi it, it's not really sci-fi ish in the sense that there's 
a, the creation of a cyber police that there are certain little bits of that in in the police and, and law enforcement but nothing as much as a specific unit devoted to it so this could very well be kind of that own thing I do wish it was like ongoing because that would be awesome to see an ongoing sort of crime drama involving cyber criminals but I guess three volumes is good is as good as we get maybe he'll do like a, a sequel series or something who knows um <clears throat> Next up, then, a uh, series that I kind of uh, wasn't reading and that I'm reading more of again uh, is Itazura na Kiss. Uh, this is volume six and seven here. Again, I am really surprised at how far they keep going in this series. Uh, you know, a lot of these romance comedy series, once the couple, you know, get together and then they, they sort of cement the relationship, that's the end of the story, but here, it, I mean, volume six, they get married, and I'm just, I'm just reading it going, I, I'm interested, how, where this, where is this gonna go? This is kind of a new, a new sort of direction that I don't normally see these series take. They don't, they don't ever explore the, the post-marriage relationship. I never see a a romance drama comedy series like this where they start in high school they're in college and and then heck by the end of volume 7 uh, she's out of college well actually technically at the end of volume 7 she decides to go back to college because she and this is another interesting thing is there's actually a lot of a lot of a uh, great sort of dynamic and a lot of well well crafted sort of character interactions they do like Kotoko she's she's sort of a clumsy ditz idiot but uh at the but at the end of the day she's really passionate and very she works really hard to try and get what she wants and and that sort of shines through and you really and you really sort of sympathize and root for her in a lot of instances like at one point her and Ire, uh, they get in an argument, and she decides that she's leaving uh, until he learns to start appreciating her. And when, and then she realizes how dumb of a move she made because she, of course, loves him. And but at the same time, she realizes, no, I gotta, I gotta figure this out for myself. I gotta figure out what what drives me like she she realizes that she can't just be happy being like sort of a housewife or just living with with uh, her husband she has to figure out like what does she want to do because she thought she want it, in an earlier volume she thought she wanted to do teaching and then and then it didn't work out and and then she found out that she flunked out of college and she decided, well, I guess I'll just become a, a housewife or something. But then she realizes an another new passion for herself. So there's a lot of changing and growth in here. And it's if you don't think you'd like romance comedy, if you don't, it, or if you really do and you want to see something different in sort of growing and changing characters and a very progressive kind of plot. Uh, this is definitely a great series for that. I, I love it to death. It, it may easily be my favorite shoujo series for that. Next up, uh, I had this for a while, but it kept eluding me on the updates. Uh, this and another one you're going to see later this time. New Lone Wolf and Cub Volume 3, which, which uh, we're still uh, seeing the ongoing... Uh, struggles of Daigoro and uh, Shigekata um, as they as they uh, struggle along in their new path. Uh, here we get sort of this neat little subplot where a guy uh, kills sort of I guess a, a high-ranking official and then impersonates him to get closer to Daigoro and uh, Shigekata, uh, and all of this while they're actually while they're at sea on a on a boat. So. We get some very interesting kind of kind of battles, uh, mostly in the sense that they're all uh, in the in the water near the ocean when they're when they're fighting each other. Um, 
I really like that, especially again, just the gorgeous, uh, the gorgeous uh, walk, uh, sort of uh, dynamics uh, with the with the art flow and the especially like water and waves. I always just love when uh, when great artists can draw uh, water and oceans like that because uh, it's because it's uh, you know it's never as easy as uh, just drawing a bunch of little squiggly lines every now and again. Uh, and then especially right here near the end I think where they're uh, fighting a group of ninjas and at the end of it uh, Daigoro has to uh, learn he's learning sort of this uh, new technique of his uh, learning how to actually fight with uh, swords and stuff uh, and, that, and that's also really great seeing seeing sort of Daigoro uh, grow and change throughout the series when in uh, the first Lone Wolf and Cub of course there was a lot less of that uh, it was more about uh, just the relationship of Ogami versus uh, Daigoro. Daigoro essentially being kind of the uh, the embodiment of of uh, Ogami's humanity, uh, which was which was again a new uh, unique kind of kind of idea. And also this interesting uh, this interesting kind of story about um, just a whale. Like there's just a whale in the in the sea, and there's sort of just this majesty about it. Which again that in in a lot of old sort of stories and tales there's always there's always a lot of great moments where you see uh you would see just dozens of people like trying to kill just one whale and i don't know there's just something about that that i always really liked about that i guess that's why i always loved moby dick was was uh getting it getting to see kind of just uh, just man overcoming this great monster is there's a lot of neat things you can do with that. Uh, overall, though, um, where was it? I thought it was, I thought it was in here that they uh, they have a uh, sort at the very end here they have uh, another uh, another nice uh, fight scene. Uh, you can tell I read this a while back and I kind of forgot about it because I'm kind of blanking on the plot of it. Again, I. I'm probably gonna need to reread a uh, new Lone Wolf and Cub if I ever get around to uh, talking about it in a serious way. Uh, next up, Showa: History of Japan. Uh, this is the 1944 to 53. So this essentially covers the end of World War II and a lot of the things that were falling out as a result of that, namely. Uh, Japan being taken over by America and uh, Douglas MacArthur becoming the uh, new sort the new um, I I, for, I don't know what exactly his title was but he was essentially in charge of Japan during immediately following up the the end of World War II and and also in here too you get a lot of uh, Shigeru uh, just surviving war. That's the best way to put Shigeru's experience in the military, was he survived. It wasn't he fought, or he battled, or he, or he, um, or, or any, or he was tested, or anything. It was just surviving. Because you could definitely tell that Shigeru, he, he didn't want to be in the military. He just got swept up into it. He didn't like being in the military. Um, he wasn't very good at it. That's for sure. He, the only thing he was good at was surviving. Eating and surviving. Which, honestly, that's probably why he made it out of there. While many of his cohorts, sadly, were not. Is, is he was always number one food. And it's especially great during this, uh, this particular volume because... You see, you see him get very sick with malaria to the point that they actually have to amputate one of his arms because it's become infected, and he's and he's just got this huge bulge where his uh, on his stump where his uh, his arm used to be, and he's just like, "Where's the food? Where's the food?" And he's all he's sitting there passed out. He's skinny. All of his hair is falling out. He, but he's still just so 
determined to keep eating. That it's just it's almost it's funny in an inspiring kind of way that he that he never gives up on it. And then following that he gets he cuts back from Japan and he's trying to figure out what to do. He he tries to become a fish vendor, but of course it's very hard to serve fish with only with only one arm because of course how do you clean a fish with only one arm? That it's possible, but you can imagine it would it wouldn't be your ideal choice of of uh, work. So he eventually so he eventually gets into the work of art of uh, drawing and art because of course he was already good at that if you've been following. There's just a lot of great history and it's made more poignant with the backdrop of much of Shigeru's personal experiences interplayed. I highly recommend it to anybody that likes history or might be interested in history or even people that don't like history because it's very approachable to to uh, that audience as well to get across some of the similar ideas and viewpoints that that uh, you would normally see in a lot of lectures about history at that time. <clears throat> then uh, let's see. This is a series that gets talked about a lot and I see some people have it but the people that do have it never seem to really talk about it and I finally got it and so that means I want to talk about it. So uh, let me get her all uh, situated here. I'm talking about uh, MPD Psycho which is a multiple personality detective psycho. Uh, I've already read through uh, volumes one through one through six here, but I have all of them. Uh, this, and I mostly got this because I kept checking online over and over again on when the next volume of Kurosagi Corpse Delivery Service is coming out, which volume 14 finally is coming out, by the way. And also they're finally re-releasing the old volumes in two-in-one bundles because those early volumes, especially I think volume five, were getting very pricey. But they are finally coming out with it, and just before that, I was really wanting more of a Eiji Osuka's stuff, and I had initially been kind of putting it off, but I decided, you know what, screw it, I'll just get it anyway. Uh, so, MPD Psycho. What's it about? It's about a, a former police detective who then, uh, it named, uh, Yousuke, uh, uh, Kobayashi, uh, who is who is a who's a police detective, and initially he's uh, he's kind of he was working for uh, the police, but then he suddenly developed a mar multiple personality disorder, and it initially it wasn't as bad, I guess, but then but then a certain event happens, and it it becomes more severe. And he starts developing other other personalities, one of which is very malicious, and he gets sent away to prison because of it. And then he's eventually let out of prison and on the grounds of, of course, insanity, and he's put under the care of a, another detective who recognizes his talents in profiling in sort of a Hannibal Lecter-ish kind of way, and he's brought on to investigate other killers, other serial killers uh, that have perturbed psyches to try and get in the mind of a killer. And following from about, I guess, volume six and on, you start to see this very unique kind of uh, plot start to play out as to the specific origins of, of, uh, of, well, his name, they say his name is Yosuke Kobayashi, but really it's more, uh, but again, really more of his uh, personality is uh, Kazuhiko Amamiya, who uh, really starts to uh, take over more. So Amamiya, he, uh, or Amamiya, he starts to find out more about what the origins of uh, his, pol his uh, personality disorder, and he finds out it's involved in a lot of conspiracy and tragic past and also other people that are wanting to to study his personality disorder for their own particular purposes 
Uh, and it just becomes a very interesting kind of plot that unveils out of it. Also very disturbing kind of uh, death scenes and, and murders in here. Lots of, there's also nudity in here too. Uh, which is no surprise then that uh, Takahashi Meike, who did Ichi the Killer, uh, did a short-lived TV live-action TV series uh, based on the manga, which uh, I watched it before I read this, and I didn't think it was that great. I'm hoping maybe from reading this uh, and liking it, it'll enhance my uh, my experience with the show more. Uh, <clears throat> See, next up we get, uh, no matter how I look at it, it's you guys' fault I'm not popular in Volume 6. Uh, which adds an interesting new dynamic to the series, which I was uh, glad to see, where uh, one of Tomoko's uh, uh, old middle school classmates, uh, Komiyama, uh, comes back and she starts, uh, she starts interacting with her, which uh, is hilarious because, of course, their first interaction wa that you see is when, uh, is when Kamiyama was at, a, was at her house and she sort of has a crush on uh, Tomoko's brother and wants to and wants to uh, give her give him some chocolates but for Valentine's but she can't get the chalk part out and so she keeps saying I want I was wondering about uh, about uh, your <laughs> yeah I want so I want your brother uh, cha 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 and of course Tomoko immediately thinks that she's saying cock and and uh, kicks her out, and and so of course the next time she sees her years later, she thinks that uh, that Kamiyama still has this uh, weird brother fetish, and it just it creates this hilarious uh, misunderstanding setup uh, between the two of them, where then they they sort of become like rivals, kind of, because Kamiyama because uh, Komiyama hate kind of hates Tomoko. And how she's always, uh, I don't know, kind of an introvert, and I guess she kind of doesn't like that about her or something. They anyway, they they just get into these weird kind of arguments with each other, and that be, that creates this kind of hilarious uh, sort of this sort of setup that that uh, really keeps the series going. And then also they they uh, keep fighting over the uh, one girl who is kind of both of their friends, but since they're not friends together, they're always arguing over who gets to hang out with uh, with her in the middle uh, in the series. It, it's, it's a neat kind of way to progress the story and keep it interesting while adding new characters. Uh, I rather like it a lot. Uh, def and also, you can check this. The uh, first volume of this is actually, uh, you can download it from for your Kindle for only three bucks, so uh, if you were just thinking about checking out, you can definitely do it that way. If you don't want to pay the full price for a uh, print version, that is. All right, next up then, uh, Blade of the Immortal, Volume Thirty, which now one more volume until Blade of the Immortal is done. Uh, this may have easily been one of the best fight scenes in the series so far in in this volume here, where Manji uh, battles against uh, what's his name uh, Maki, uh, this this sort of towering giant here. Uh, this I think he's Scandinavian. He's got to be Scandinavian or something. Uh, but this dude with the uh, with this sort of swirly beard, and he's just got this this uh, massive build to him uh, wielding these two sort of steel slabs basically when he when he fights and and Manji he's just he can't he can't overpower him it, he's covered head to toe well neck to toe in body armor and and anytime Manji tries to attack him in a what he thinks might be a weak point he just uh, Maki just sort of swings with no effort and just takes him out. It's a very interesting fight and the way it ends is even more epic that it makes you wait it makes you just want to see how the fight with uh out with what's his name? Aotsu uh, Kagehitsa is uh going to play out between him and Manji if it if it does. I I really hope that there is a final battle with uh, those two.
And uh, next up, One Piece Volume 73, uh, where we get plenty of uh, backstory specifically involving um, the involving Doflamingo of the, uh, I think they're what, the Don Quixote uh, family and how they came into power, um, which again, One Piece always does a great job with uh, the backstories they do. Uh, the only thing is, I, I don't know, it just feels like there's a little too many characters right now with, with um, you know, Luffy doing his own thing independent of, of the, uh, I think it's Nico, Robin, Usopp, Frankie are doing something and then I think it's, uh, I think it's Brooke and Chopper and Nami are on the, on the ship and then and then Trafalgar Law is doing his thing with Doflamingo and I, I don't know when you when you get that many subplots going it I don't know it kind of loses me a little bit I but I think uh, it I got a little spoiled on something that's gonna be happening uh, in the next volume specifically as somebody who who shows up from Luffy's past and uh, and if it's what I think and if it's a uh, and if it's anything as cool as I think it's going to be, I think uh, it's going to really pick up from uh, 74 on. And then speaking of action series where it's hard to remember what's been going on, uh, Air Gear Volume 32 uh, with, again, it's hard for me to remember exactly what's going on other than there was a, it starts with a backstory involving um, Akito and Agito's, uh, their, their sort of surrogate brother, uh, what's his name? And um, just sort of how he eventually became uh, part of involved in this uh, anti air trek sort of sort of coalition. Uh, he's featured there, and you get you get a backstory of that, and and then uh, what what else? You also get a great final fight with uh, between Orca and Butka or Butcha. I forget his name. I really liked uh, their fight and how they took it into the water. Uh, that was sort of an interesting uh, strategy he had uh, in how he was fighting completely underwater without even taking a single breath. Uh, and also the way in which he trained to become better at better at uh, staying underwater longer. Again, it, it's some of the best drawn over the top action he fights, uh, especially like how. Uh, Oh, great! Does a lot of the uh, effects, uh, a lot of these sort of explosions, and the way he draws speed line and action, and especially whenever he draws anything with a lot of intricate uh, Giger esque, uh, HR Giger esque uh, mechanical organic parts. Uh, that's always a very cool design. I, I always thought that he'd be great if you could pair him up maybe with like a. Hirohiko Araki esque kind of kind of style. Not to say that Araki has bad art style, but I'm saying Oh Great should do something where he's just drawing those kinds of things all the time, not just as kind of this sort of uh, here's me embodying kind of the spirit of what's hitting him, and instead being like in JoJo's Bizarre Adventure where the where the spirit is the thing. And just drawing more of that instead of just this one splash page of a guy doing a spin kick and then seeing like the shark, this mechanical shark in the background, and then it's still just the spin kick. The, the big shark thing was like some kind of, I guess, like a, like just sort of a punctuation mark just to show how badass it is. And like I'd rather just see more of the shark thing. Uh, but it's still it's still good. I can't wait for uh, it to end though. Uh, that would be nice. Uh, so again, the other thing I was talking about that I uh, kept forgetting was um, it, I haven't been getting really any uh, downloaded uh, manga. Really, uh, I just stick mostly to the to the um, just printed stuff. But one series I have been getting on on a Kindle has been um, One Punch Man. I've been since I guess the second volume came out. I got I've been getting um, One Punch Man, uh, which you can 
which you can see right here I got a One Punch Man um, Volume 1, Volume 2, and then Volume, uh, where is it, 3, 4, and then, uh, I know it's kind of hard to see on the glare, but uh, I'm all the way caught up with uh, Volume 5. It's, it's an interesting sort of uh, manga series where, of course, uh, you have the titular character who's kind of a who's called, uh, of course, One Punch Man. Uh, he's not really called One Punch Man. He's called, he's called something else, but uh, I always forget because um, cause, uh, you only really see him uh, the, the cyborg guy always calls him like teacher or sensei or something, but uh, story is by one. Artwork is by uh, Yusuke Murata, who you may recognize did uh, the artwork for Ice Shield 21, so that should already tell you uh, kind of the quality of artwork you're getting here. If you were a big fan of of uh, of Ice Shield 21, it's just like that. Also, those of you that that may not have been uh, wanting to get like the Kindle the Kindle versions, um, it does read from uh, right to left, so you do still have to. Uh, tap from the uh, was it the left side of the of the screen? It, it's the same orientation you would as manga. So if you were thinking about getting it but not wanting to pick it up because you were concerned about the orientation on a on a e-reader device, it, it, that's not a problem. Um, I don't know why it's uh, it suddenly decided to bug on me, but uh, I also like they they still include the little author notes and stuff in there. Uh, it's it's a really fun series, uh, mostly about like uh, the the uh, superheroes. Um, you have uh, I think his name is what Saitama. Saitama uh, is is featured in the foreground there with uh, Genos in the back. Uh, Saitama is kind of this, this sort of everyman who decides one day he wants to be a he superhero and he just trains like crazy. He does a, he does a thousand push-ups and a thousand sit-ups and he runs a hundred kilometers every day and he's been doing that for five years and he suddenly becomes the most powerful being in the world. He can beat any opponent in one punch and he he uh, gets the attention of this uh, cyborg named uh, Genos who wants to train under him to be also become a great hero uh, and and it's also about them uh, fighting to uh, become true superheroes and apparently in this in this world uh, heroes sort of go up in ranks depending on how well they perform good deeds and what they want to do is to uh, work hard enough to become like a class uh you can see like some of the villains the way they're drawn is just it's really great detail especially uh, again kind of like with o grade how they do uh a lot of the uh action and speed lines uh another interesting thing is when you get to like a double page spread here uh you'll see that they that it breaks it up right in the middle where the page is but you can also turn it sideways and it draws the whole image in, but there's no, there's no, there's no like a pesky little seam there, uh, which of course is because uh, this was originally drawn in, uh, uh, this was a, this was drawn digitally, so there was never, it was never originally a print version that they had to scan later. It was always, it was always uh, in one in one uh, chunk like that so it benefits from its digital roots uh, to work well as a Kindle download um, so I wouldn't know if like older titles like I guess Dragon Ball or or uh, Nice of Zodiac or something like that if they would do two page spreads like that or if it would have that break in the middle where the where maybe they're pressing the pages down to line it up or or what exactly I'm, I'm not sure but needless to say if if you were thinking about getting some great uh, action manga series uh, that would definitely be a great series to pick up uh, heck if anybody wants they can they can give me their uh, Amazon email and uh, you know I could just uh, Kindle loan you uh, the One Punch Man, uh, if you want, so you can check it out and keep it for two months, and then it, you know, reverts back to me. I don't care. Uh, 
anything to to help you figure out if it's what you want. Uh, so cool. Check check that out. Uh, check out all the other stuff too, and I'll uh, check me out. All right. See y'all later.